everyone. Welcome back. My name is Jane. This is the Procrastinator Podcast. It's where I talk about things that I've been knitting while procrastinating other things. So, yes, today, today what shall we talk about? Well, should I say, did I already say my name? Okay, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram at you underscore. And yeah, sometimes I post stuff about what I'm knitting and things like that. So yeah, it'll be fun. Come join, come join. Um, today we're going to talk about, like every day or every time, uh, we're going to talk about things I'm knitting, things I'm going to knit, things I've finished knitting, new yarn, new things related to knit and crochet, because I also crochet, but there's no crochet in this episode. But, you know, I do do that. Okay, so I guess we will start with finished objects. I have quite a number of finished objects to share with you, which is really exciting. They're not like completely finished. They're off the needles, but they're not washed or blocked or woven in. The ends aren't woven in. But, um, you know, they're, they're finished enough. So, let's just get started. My goodness, there's so many things. Currently, everything's like living in here, which is a project bag that William got me. Alright, let's see. The first, like, pretty exciting finished objects I have to show is this pair of socks. So I believe this was already done last time, but I finished the other one too. Yeah, so you can totally tell the difference between this has, it has not been blocked, but it's, I've worn it. Um, and like it's molded to my feet a bit and it's definitely stretched out uh, a lot more than this pair. But this is um, Summerly Knits, or some Summerly Designs maybe. Um, like checkered socks. It's my first color work socks, like I said last time, and my first time doing a forethought heel. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of firsts. The yarn I'm using is Miss Babs um, Yummy 2 Ply. It was a fade set, like a gradient set. So that's what happened. And yeah, if you remember last time I like messed up, I didn't do as many blocks of like these two colors as I intended so then these aren't completely matching because this goes like from dark to light and then this is dark again but this the transition is just a little faster in this sock because I messed up a little yeah but that's okay they both fit really well um, it's a little difficult to get this through my like through this part of my foot what is that called? From your heel to like the top of your foot. It's a little hard to get it through, but once it's through, it fits really well. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I really like these. Um, it makes me want to knit like a scrappy pair of socks or do more color work socks because it was pretty fun. I would definitely not do a forethought, afterthought, anything sort of heel where I knit a tube and cut into it because honestly, it was... It was well, one, I don't love the fit, two, I don't love the look, and three, it was just a pain. It was really just a pain to do. So I don't, I don't think that's really my forte, but I am, I mean, doing this has like made me a little braver in sock knitting or more adventurous, I guess. So I'm thinking, I just watched um, Earth Tone Girls podcast. I think her name, I'm pretty sure her name's Denise. She's really great, has great energy. I'm sure everyone already knows her, but in case you don't, um, she was talking about a square toe and I'd never, or not a square toe, a square heel. I never thought about or never known about it before. Um, so I'm really curious about it. So I think in my next pair of socks, I might try a square heel. Um, yeah, cause it's, it's like a, I believe it is a heel flap and guess it or some some sort of heel flap situation um but it's just gets turned in a way where it makes a right angle and that sounds very interesting so yeah i, I might try that next time and then i i am really curious to do um short row heels but yeah i'm not sure if that would be the best fit for my foot 
like the heel flap and gusset is great works really well for me so might stick to that um but I don't know it's good to try these new heels and such so yeah I'm just really happy with how these turned out they are really awesome in my opinion and I had to do quite a bit of modifications I don't know if I said this last time but the toe is my regular toe it's not the toe that Summer Lee uh, put in her pattern it's the toe from Crazy Sock Lady I'm not sure what kind of toe it's called but you decrease every other round until a certain stitch count and then you do decreases every round until the final stitch count I don't know what if you know what that sounds like let me know because I always want to say what kind of toe I do but I don't know how to the heel I didn't do the heel the same as the toe but I definitely did um like the final uh, stitch count for the heel is a, definitely a lot smaller in number than um, what Summerly really has and I think it makes it look better too the other I don't know if it was this yarn my gauge or what but the other like the the heel she suggested in the pattern just like would have been like this much shorter I think and it it was just like not cute it did not look cute for the way I made it um and it uh didn't fit like the this there was like just too much at the corners and when I wore it it was not good so I just kind of modified um, my own heel. So that's that. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's not too much else to say about these. Uh, the ends have not been woven in. So that's something I still need to do. Uh, but the inside looks pretty cool. So there's still... <laughs> Like a bunch of ends I have to weave in so that's like a little annoying but maybe now if I turn them inside out after this maybe I will have a burst of energy to weave in the ends but yeah it's pretty awesome okay so that was that now that that is done let see I have my next finished object is just one sock out of the pair but I really like it I really like it so I guess again it's not completely finished because I still have somewhat ends to weave in but here she is yeah it's this purple variegated color and then I did a pop of yellow and a pop of yellow so this is um I don't know can you tell is it different is it different from my normal socks because it is this is a toe up sock this is my first toe up sock I've never done toe up sock before I thought it would be hard or like confusing but it really isn't I followed Nitty Natty's tutorial on um how to start the toe and then I basically did the toe the opposite of how I do it cuff down if that makes sense so I, I did the same rate and number of increases and stitch count and all that as the toe I usually do um, but just in reverse so and I did like make one left and make one right I didn't do in her Nitty Natty's tutorial she was doing like it's like you knit one and then you knit it into the stitch again I forget what it's called it's like I don't know but I did I did make one left and make one right um and I think it turned out really well I really love the yarn it's Malabrigo sock um yeah I love Malabrigo sock I think they have great colors and uh it's a good price point um for the quality and yeah, I don't know it's just nice to work with and then this pop of color is that Knit Picks stroll tonal something like that um poppy fields color that I used for my um like tank top Venice wrap top I think Venice tank top that um I had last time so I still have leftovers this is how much I have left still so I mean I still have the heel to do of the other a sock and like the little pop of color here but I don't know I think I'm still gonna have extra so yeah um Anyways, so a toe-up sock is not as intimidating as I thought. I 
and then I did a heel flap and gusset the same way I would but it just looks you know the opposite of uh or like usually a heel flap and gusset the this is the back of your foot and this is the heel but here it's just like extra reinforced at the bottom ball is this the ball of your foot I don't know at the bottom of your foot and then this is the heel um I've never worn my socks with shoes that have um a back so it's not a super I be I basically wear them around the house and in Birkenstocks so yeah I'm not too concerned about um durability and if it does like you know if I do wear a hole through it then I'll just darn it like it's not um, a big issue but yeah so I do like how it looks and then I did I uh, don't know what the cast off is called um it's you know relatively stretchy I think it'll be fine and um the cast what is it called I did a pop of color like crazy sock lady does I did I think three rounds of the yellow and I can't remember it was her tutorial it was crazy sock lady's tutorial uh, because I did two by two ribs so you can't do like a or it's a little more complicated if you want to do like a tubular Italian bind off or something like that but um this was a pretty simple bind off like pretty easy to do it's not like the best but it's also not the worst um, it was a crazy sock lady tutorial. It was just like knitting and purling, I think. I think. I don't remember. I genuinely don't remember. Uh, but if you are really curious, leave me a comment and I will figure it out. Because I will have to figure it out eventually in order to do it for the second sock. So, what am I saying? I, um, it's more enjoyable than I thought, but like knitting a toe up sock, but I definitely still prefer a top down sock. I think the, um, and actually the first time I knit this, I made the foot too, uh, long because I, like, didn't have a good understanding of how much, like, I needed, how much space I needed to have before the heel flap and gusset. Um, but, you know, I f figured it out, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think one of the, like, uh, pros of knitting a toe-up sock is so you can try it on as you go, but since I'm, I knit these on primarily on 9-inch circulars, um, I'd have to like transfer them over to Magic Loop or something to try them on in the first place because like my foot's not going to fit in a 9-inch circular needle. Um, so yeah, that wasn't as helpful, um, but it's fine. I... yeah. I don't know yeah I feel like that's like what I would think is the biggest pro of knitting um of knitting toe up because like I really don't like casting off here I prefer to kitchener the toe so that's what I think um I love the yarn I love the yarn it's really great as I've said so okay I'll show you the second toe or the second sock this is my progress so far this is the stitch marker I'm using. I think it like came in, um, came in as like a little goodie from, anyways, I think it came part of the Miss Babs order um, that William's mom placed. And I really love it. I really love it. It's so simple. It's literally just a ring with a little red bead on it, but it brings me so much joy when I use it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun. To use as a little stitch marker so yeah that's where my go-to so this is my progress on that okay uh -huh. and this is how much of the yarn i have left so it's quite a bit i never use um an entire uh 100 grams for socks because i tend to do like not a shorty but definitely not a super long uh, leg and um, especially with these ones since they were a contrasting um, heel I think it definitely adds to the yardage so I could probably make two pairs of socks from that if I wanted to and actually with these I've been for the heel flap I'm pretty sure I did them on um, magic loop usually I do them on DPNs but yeah might be reconverted to 
using magic loop for the heel. Um, I just like that it's one needle, you know what I mean? Or like one cord instead of, yeah, and I think I did the toe using, um, yeah, I oh, that's why I use magic loop because I had to start on magic loop. So I did the toe magic loop and then, um, yeah. And I did the heel too, since this was just like in my bag. So that that's like an update, I guess, I suppose. That's the next finished object. And then my last finished object is arguably the most exciting one. So, dun, 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 dun. well, this is not a finished object, obviously, but this is how much yarn I have left over. I, I mean, actually, I have this much yarn left over. So, quite a bit. These, okay, let's talk about the yarn first. Teaser, in case you haven't seen the rest of my podcasts, but this is um, Cascade Yarns Eco Plus. Cascade Yarns Eco, Eco Plus in the color um, Wisteria. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Um, it came in a gigantic hank, a 200 gram hank. So this is how my how much I had left. So I, if I had to guess, I think I used around 300 um, grams. I don't know what that yardage is, but um, and then I had three balls of these, and this is how much I had left. So I was really scared of running out of this because I think I mean I didn't follow the pattern to a T. So I think if I did, I would have probably ran out of this or been really really close. But I still have um a good bit left so that was good because i was about to order a fourth ball because i was so scared but i was just like you know what it's gonna be fine and then once i had knit one sleeve and seen how much i had left i was like okay i'm definitely fine so but yeah this is how much yarn i had left from that project so i feel really good about it because this yarn was really economical and this yarn was too uh this is valley yarns um so the just like the webs yarn uh, Southampton, 72% uh, kid mohair, 28% mulberry silk, um, in 25 gram balls. So uh, I had three. So yeah, I would say I probably used 60 grams of the mohair, which I, yeah. The pattern is heavily, mo not heavily modified, but like I didn't knit the full length of it in any aspect. So that explains it but here she is this is cardigan i want to say i want to say this is cardigan number seven but i never know i really truly never know okay i still have to weave in the ends etc but i finished this last night it hasn't been hasn't been blocked or anything uh so yeah i'm gonna weave in the ends then block it uh, and there are no buttons yet, but, you know. That's fine. So, let me show you what it looks like. Okay. Okay. It's a raglan cardigan. It's my second cardigan. My first raglan anything. And definitely my first raglan cardigan. Um, Yeah, it's my first time knitting wool plus mohair, I'm pretty sure. I've knit, like, yeah, I've knit just mo- well, I guess that's a lie. I knit a cowl that had some sections that were wool and mohair, but I've never knit an entire thing that's, like, wool and mohair. It feels like such a splurge to be able to do this, but I love um, how it turned out. I really like the color. It- I love the fit. So, let's see. There's no good way to show you. There's no good way to show you. Yeah, there's not a, a great way. But I love, I love the sleeves. I wear a watch now, so I'm really I made the sleeves quite a bit shorter because um, I wanted my watch to show. I didn't want it to be like scrunched up all the time. But I guess it would have been fine if it had been. And I was playing yarn chicken, so I was also. That was part of it, um, but yeah. I just, I love how the sleeve, sleeves look. 
and I think I knit the perfect perfect size too but this is a size small I was gonna knit a medium but uh yeah after thinking about it I was like I think I can get away with a size small I think it looks really good um yeah I would totally knit this again um I totally could see myself like if I had an office job, totally see myself like wearing this. It's so warm right now because it is like animal fiber um, to the max. But this has like really inspired me to knit a raglan jumper, just a basic one. I think I could even take the numbers from this. I might knit it a size up, but like use the numbers from this to knit um, just a raglan sweatshirt, a pullover. I think it would be so cute. Um, yeah, I really love it. This like construction also reminds me of um is it honey knits or like a honey knits her cardigan except i think she doesn't do uh, the uh, this button band edging and i think that looks really good too so i think like next time i might um basically use this pattern but not make the button band or like the this the seam right here so yeah this has really opened up the doors for me in terms of knitting and cardigan knitting and all of that. So um, it was a really easy pattern to follow. I really enjoyed myself knitting it. And yeah, I think this is definitely one of the best things I've ever knit. Um, and I learned quite a number of skills from it. So that's always good. So yeah. The one thing though that I will say is was a, a little weird is um, when we were doing this like neckband or um, even here at the sleeves, there were several instances where it, it's one by one rib, but it would like start off with like two knit stitches or end with two knit stitches or some situation where it wasn't actually one by one rib all the way through. And then so then when I was doing the Italian bind off, I didn't, didn't really know how to deal with it. I just like, I can't even explain to you what I did, but I mean, I think it's fine, like nobody's gonna be looking that hard and most of it is like Italian bind off, so just the beginning or end is like a little weird in some places. Um, but I just, I thought that was a weird and I didn't really look up how to um, solve that issue. So I guess I could have investigated it further, but I was just like ready for it to be off the needles. So I didn't really do anything about it, but that was one thing that was like, that's a little weird. Um, but overall, I love it. I love it, I love it. And I'm so glad I didn't run out of yarn because, yeah, okay. Next, I have to take it off because it's so warm. It's too warm, it's too warm to be wearing this. It looks so fun though, it's so nice, so nice. So yeah, I'm glad for that. I'm just gonna weave in the ends at some point and um, block it and I wonder, yeah, so see, if I like, was super bothered I would have unpicked the sleeves since I know I have the extra yarn I like if I had more patience I would unpick the sleeve and um, knit it a few centimeters longer but because I don't have the patience I'm not gonna do that but I'm hoping that when it blocks like when I wash and block it it might grow a little which is nice too because I think I mean I really like the fit but I think it could be a little bigger so I'm excited to see how it will be transformed in the wash so yeah super super exciting okay that was my last um that was my last finished object and um yeah so moving on to whips you already saw one of them which is that sock and then the only other whip i have has not progressed at all so it's the uh it's this looks the same as you saw it last time um it's gonna be a dress it's gonna be the what, not your type or something dress or above your above your league out of your league out of your league dress uh, by aka Shayna. um yeah i just haven't felt um I think because I, like, I, I was really motivated to finish the cardigan and like with the socks and stuff I was just like not um, leaning toward this knit but hopefully I will pick it up again soon because 
it is cotton and it like would be nice to wear in California instead of these big woolly things that I have little use for right now, but that's okay. So, you know, that's the update on that. There's like nothing. I'm also playing yarn chicken with that uh, quite a bit, but you know, hopefully it's, um, won't be that big of a deal. And if it is, then we will cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's the end of the whips <laughs> section. Um, and then in terms of acquisitions, I do have one acquisition that is like so, 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 so exciting. Um, so I went to visit my cousins in Morgan Hill, California, which is like a little outside of San Jose, which is a little outside of San Francisco, California, um, in case you're not familiar with the area. But yes, so I mean, my cousins have lived there since forever, like I'm pretty sure one of them was like born there. Um, so it's been, you know, like decades of them living there and us knowing about them living there and us visiting them there. And I mean, I guess I've only been knitting for like a year and a half-ish, but actually, I don't know when my knitting podcast anniversary is, but it must be around this time. It mu today's like August 12th. It must be around this time. Um, wait, okay, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Okay, nothing's loading. Okay, but okay, I'll go back to the story as this loads. So we've known about them like living there for a while. I don't know why I keep saying that, but... I've been there many times and I think last summer was when I like started knitting or like being more interested in um, yarn that wasn't uh, from Michaels. Not that there's like anything wrong with that but I just like got more interested in different types of fiber and like different things you could make with them and like etc etc. Um, so I was trying to see you know and I think I'd just gone to like a local yarn shop in Alexandria with like William's a mom and I was just like ooh local yarn shops like this is so fun like I wonder if there's a local yarn shop um by me and I was not really impressed by the one that I went to I think there are a couple more that are a little bit further away from me that I haven't um gone to so you know maybe those are better but okay that Aside, aside from that. So when we went to Morgan Hill, I was like, I really want to find a, uh, like a local yarn shop and like just like explore that. That was like a, a year ago, last summer. Um, and I think like I just looked up like knitting store or yarn store or something and something called Continental Stitch came up. But I totally just like ignored, I don't know why. I don't know why I totally just ignored it because um, I ignored it because it was called Continental Stitch and I thought it would be like an embroidery floss store or some sort of like more stitching um, heavy store so I totally like didn't even look into it at all and this summer I looked into oh no I think I was trying to find other local yarn sh shops near me and I just like found out that Ravelry, Ravelry has like a directory of local yarn shops etc and then I was just looking California like at large and I saw something that was in Morgan Hill, and I was like, Morgan Hill? What in the world? So, um, long story short, I realized it was a yarn store. So this summer when we went up there, I did go to Continental Stitch, and the ladies there were very nice. And, um, yeah, I don't think they get many young people because I went with um, my two younger sisters and the lady was like, oh, are you here for Waldo? And I was like, I'm here to get some yarn. Uh, I guess there's like a summer program where the kids there like get to explore the town and go to different places and get a stamp for finding Waldo. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, so I went, it was really, really nice and I got yarn. Okay, but before that, the thing loaded and my first video was published August 6th. So it has been officially a little bit over a year since my first podcast, so that is so, Fun. and thanks so much for sticking around if you were here from the start or thanks so much for joining um if you're new but yeah welcome welcome everybody so yeah wait that reminds me if you like this content and you want to hear more of me rambling you should subscribe and like the video and comment and share with all your friends because that would be very very nice of you to do for me okay back to the yarn store the yarn i got I mean, 
I want to say I didn't go with the intention of buying yarn, but I know that would be false. But also I wasn't, you know, I was like, if I don't like absolutely love something, I won't get it. I mean, okay. This is what I got. This, I'm in a purple phase. Everyone already knows I'm in a purple phase. But this is the yarn I got. It was rather expensive because this is, uh, this is made with cashmere, a little bit. Not a lot of it, but a little bit. So this is the Dream In Color yarn. Lavender Bloom is the color and it's their smushy cashmere base. I had heard about their just like smushy based base and that's what I was hoping to get but they didn't have that. They had this color and it was a smushy cashmere so I was like I guess I guess I have to be smushy cashmere. Um, I almost bought two but then I was like Jane that's too much. This was a little over $35 so that's um not just like chump change but it's a really beautiful. I don't think purple is like the best color on me but I just love it. I just love looking at it. I just love it. I love it. Purple and green and orange but not to wear. Um, so yeah it's just really nice. This is uh okay I'll read it to you. Fingering weight uh 70 percent superwash merino 20 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon um four ounces is four ounces 100 grams oh shoot i don't even know it is 400 yards so i think that's like 100 grams of fingering weight usually and uh yeah I don't know. it's just so nice what does it say practical luxury yes this is luxury for sure so this is my new yarn. I don't know what to make with it yet because making a sock with this just feels wrong. It just feels wrong. So uh, not wrong, but it, it just feels like too much of a treat. So I don't know what to make with this yet. Maybe it'll become some sort of tank that could be really nice, actually. <gasps> Wait, that could be really nice. Okay, that might be what I end up doing. Like, cause think of it. <gasps> oh, yes. Okay. This might be a tank top of some kind, some, some sort of top, but uh, so nice. I mean, I might have to end up buying another, um, but it's fine. It's fine. It's great. I love it. It's just, it's, it's everything. It's so nice. And this is, yeah, it was just nice. It's just nice. The yarn store itself is also really great. They had a huge selection of Noro which I think is what they're known for. Um, but yeah, it was really, really nice. So that's what I got from that. And that's the only thing I got. Um, okay, yep. And then I guess the next thing, oh wait, hold on. I wanted to show you my, I forgot to do this earlier, but. These are my scraps for the um, checkered socks. So I obviously have like quite a bit left. I have a tiny bit left of the green, but I don't know where that went, like the darkest green. I don't know where it went, but you know, I have a sizable amount of everything else. So um, I could make stripey socks with these. I could, uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably just stripey socks is what I'd go for, but I have quite a bit left. So yeah, just wanted to, share <laughs> okay and then with these scraps i don't know what i'll do with them either but uh well this yarn i might felt something with this and yeah and the leftover we are knitters the wool yarn i had from my um rice jumper i do that but okay i want to talk about things i'm planning on knitting or things i'm or yarns I'm thinking about using because I have accumulated quite a bit of yarn from my own self, from people giving me yarn, um, very luckily, um, like gifted yarn, things like that. So I wanna make stuff with them before getting new yarn because I don't have them in much space. I moved back home and I'm living in 
a rather small bedroom and things are getting taken over so um yeah what am i trying to say so yarns and projects that i'm thinking of using soon all right let's get started so first i don't know if i showed you this already because i wound this up a long time ago but this is um Cloud One Fibers Alpaca and Highland Naturals in Espresso Heather. This is 50% super fine alpaca, 50% fine Highland wool, fingering weight. Uh, 50 grams each. So I had planned to make a top with this, um, a camisole number four, seven, I don't know. One of the camisoles, um, the one that has like a high neck. And um, I haven't yet, but I don't know, it's just not speaking to me, I don't know why, I'm just not feeling, I'm not feeling like making it at the moment, um, yeah, so maybe I'll use it to make another tank, I don't know why I'm not feeling the vibes. I don't have the pattern yet, I think that's also the other thing, it's like not an expensive pattern, but it's just like one extra step I have to do um, to start knitting, so. Or maybe it's just because like I've had so many projects that I don't know if I actually even really want to start one right now before finishing things, but I'm just trying to think ahead of like what's next because it's something to look forward to. But yeah, so I have this yarn that's already wound up, so I'd like to use it um, sometime soon. And then I have this yarn that's been in stash for a while, and it was from Williams Month Stash. This is Barocco Nostalgia. I don't even know if it's in production anymore. It's probably not. Um, it's 46% cotton, 30% acrylic, 24% nylon. I believe it's like a... Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about, like, I don't really recognize what, like, the gauges for things um but it is 28 rows and 20 stitches per 10 centimeters i don't know if that means anything to anyone um yeah i mean i think it's probably like maybe a a, D, a dk maybe it's a dk weight uh yarn genuinely don't know but it's um i think it's like Four, eight ply? Four, one, two? I don't know, it's it's very plied and it's kind of shimmery. Um, it's pretty cool. So, I would like to use it soon for something. Um, I'm thinking I'll make my mom something with this yarn. I don't know what, I guess maybe like a tank top, because she likes those. Um, but yeah, I have quite a number of balls of this so we'll see i also think this would look really cute um as like a crochet cardigan so maybe i do that i don't know but yeah i just wanted to bring this out again to like re-familiarize myself with it and like have it as thoughts <laughs> and then the next thing i want to do something with is this yarn also from william's mom um malabrigo mecca in the colorway glaze it's a bulky weight yarn 100 percent superwash merino it's super pretty i've shown it before but you know what's the harm in showing it again it's these like purples and pinks but like really cool toned um and it's just really really nice and i think i'm gonna use it to make this um i'll insert a picture here i forget the pattern name but it's um originally a it, the pattern itself is a sweater pattern but the picture that i saw it was somebody modified it to be a cardigan so yes i'm and i really really like how it looks i really love how it looks as a cardigan so i mean i think she just converted the pattern to knit it flat but i'm thinking i'm, th I'm thinking that maybe I convert it so I could steak it. I've never steaked anything before. <laughs> I don't know anything about steaking. 
I know like the basic principle, but I don't know how to modify a pattern to be steeps. I think I just need to add in a um, couple, eight, like a like three to five uh, stitches, a column of stitches um, that will later be cut into. But yeah, that, that was very exciting to me. That's very exciting to me. I think that will be a project soon because I'm like, I have a concrete idea about it. Um, but yeah, so I think I'm, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna like convert a sweater pattern into a pattern that I'm gonna stick and turn into a cardigan. So that will be very, very cool. Um, yeah, I have quite a number of these. I think I'll probably have leftovers, but it's just so nice. Maybe this is a bulky weight too. It's definitely like, it could be bulky. Well, I guess I'll just, I'll just look at the meter age of this. Okay, so I think this is like whatever one step below bulky is. So worsted, 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 and it is worsted, and this is bulky. Okay. Yes. And then the last yarn that I want to figure out what to do with is this yarn that I've had in stash for quite a while, like over a year. This is Cottonwood Fibra Nat Natura. Um, it is 100% organic cotton, and I would say this is probably like a DK, DK to worsted, I don't really know. But I bought this to knit a sweater vest out of, and then that was before I understood knitting, so it's a purple as well. Oh my gosh, like, come on you guys. Ugh. This is definitely a much cooler purple than, and I would say this is a warmer purple. Um, but you know, nevertheless, pearl. Um, and I don't know what I shall make out of this. There is, I have, maybe I make a, I was gonna say maybe I crochet something out of this, but I'm not sure. Maybe I just make a nice tank. I don't know. This color is nice, but I can't really imagine wearing it. So if anybody has thoughts for, um, a, maybe I'll make like a headband, but no, like cotton stretches and then it doesn't like snap back into shape, right? So I feel like I shouldn't do like a headband, but maybe I could do like a bandana. Okay, I'm sorry for the change in angle. Like my iPad is propped up against something and I can't like reachieve the same angle as I had before. Or maybe it is and I don't know. But anyways, um, so yeah, I'm not sure what to do with this yarn and if anybody has suggestions for a 100% cotton um, DK weight-ish pattern, let me know. I have um, I have quite a f this ball is 115 yards and I think I have like five or six of these so something for like 500 to 600 yards of cotton would be good if anyone has suggestions but yeah I think that's it. Those are all my knitting plans, all the things, all the things I wanted to talk about. Um, we have a new addition to the family. This is Dinosaurus slash Pickle. We got him at Target and he's so cute. He was looking lonely so we rescued him. And um, yeah, hello. All right, well, Thanks so much you guys for coming and watching and clicking on this video and thanks so much if you made it this far. Thanks so much if you are a subscriber and thanks so much if you are even thinking about subscribing. I hope you liked this video. Again, you can follow me on Instagram at you underscore and yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!